Sharice here with Retirement Coffee Talk. I am sitting with Dr. Roger Ibbotson and Dr. William Getzman. Thank you so much for the invitation here to Yale University. It's such an honor. And I will tell you, and all of our listeners, this is going to be one of my most favorite shows. I'm sitting with finance professors, and we just had a nice lesson on annuities and inflation and the stock market. And there's a lot of people out there wondering, what's the next thing going to happen between recessions? And what do we do with our bonds? And is inflation going to keep going up? And we're hoping to get some answers today. And Roger, the last time you and I hung out was at the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. I had a great conversation. That was in 2019. And we talked about bonds and the, the bubble we're going to have. And you, you really pinpointed that. And uh, now moving forward, we're in 2023. And uh, let's talk about bonds just a little bit more. Do you, do you have the same vision and mathematical equation on the direction of bonds moving forward? It's not as obvious today, but uh, bonds are still risky. Back, back into 2019, it was a really odd situation because we had all this potential inflation coming about. We had the bloated Fed balance sheet, which was basically creating money, and we had Huge federal deficits were as big as World War II uh, as a percentage of GDP. And we had yields that were, were almost zero, basically. So it was a really odd situation. And of course, when, what, inflation is a big part of a yield, a bond yield. So when you have inflation, it's part of the yield. But when the yield rises, like we had last year, the bonds just collapse. And, and actually, bonds are down this year as well. So one of the I, I don't know exactly know which way bonds are going to go, but I, I will say this. Bonds are not riskless. They actually have quite a bit of risk in bonds. And they're a part of a retirement, of course. So so having um, bonds as a risky piece like that, which we sort of have dependent upon as the low-risk part of our retirement, they're not fully doing their job. Sure. So if bonds are not riskless and we, re we retire, we're looking to reduce exposure to the stock market. What are some alternatives? I mean, this is a great answer for both of you to start seeking. Well, I, I, and we did talk a lot today about annuities, mm -hmm. and annuities are certainly one way of doing it because that one of the keys is it's insurance, um, and most annuities are insured in some way, and so insurance is that's what it's all about. It's trying to insure it protects whatever you're trying to protect, whether you're trying to protect collision on your car or fire in your house or something, or life insurance or just longevity of your retirement. All these things are things that are potentially things that can be insured. And that's what the insurance industry is doing. So I think it can be part of the investment picture that we all participate in. I would emphasize the longevity risk is something that is uh, everybody cares about. You know, it's not something that you see reported a lot about, you know, stocks and bonds and so forth, because those things are, are not keyed into people's lives. But people's savings are, are are really intended, at least their retirement savings, are intended to take care of them, them until they pass on and then also whatever they want to leave. But that means you have to have a plan for that kind of uncertainty about how long you're going to live. So um, that's um, designing a portfolio for that is crucial for uh, retirees. You don't want to outlive your wealth. And uh, so how do you, um, as Roger says, how do you buy insurance that you're not going to outlive your wealth? That's what a life annuity is designed to address. Sure. And, and today we have four kinds of annuities. The life annuity, we have the fixed annuity, we have the variable annuity, and we have the wonderful index annuity. Out of the four annuities, you know, if you had to say, let's just nix it, we don't need it, well, wh which one would it be? that would be probably the least useful and for retirees? I'm not sure I'm ready to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be a little politically correct for this one. <laughs> well, I, I think you have to realize that the reason those different products exist is because they serve different purposes. Sure. So, um, you know, you don't want to line them up and say this is better than that. The problem of outliving your wealth, you know, that's what a life annuity is all about, but also um, something that is uh, keyed in to an index uh, has great value as well. Uh, you know, something that uh, the index helps you understand and, and plan for a certain set of return and risk characteristics. So, you know, that's why that one exists. Um, I think varieties in products, um, in financial products, I mean, the varieties exploded in the last 20 or 30 years. You know, 
ETFs are a whole uh, world in and of themselves. And so I think that that has been really healthy for the most part, but it's also presented challenges for individuals trying to build a portfolio when now you have a lot more choice. Yeah, definitely going outside the box today is working. Speaking of, you know, we want to take a balanced approach to keep up with inflation. Earlier when we were out there talking, you guys said we're here at Maury's Bar, Pub, Grill, uh, where this has been here for over 100 years or so. And you guys are talking about one of the biggest conversations between all the professors and you guys. You come back to the table all the time. It's about inflation. So I would think it'd be more about stock markets and the next recession and stuff. But it sounds like it's really recession because it really just really eats away at our investment returns. And so we'll talk about inflation. I have a $100 bill. And Mr. Benjamin, I would like to know, if you go back to 1983, I'll ask Roger first. 1983, you know exactly where you were. You were just starting here. What was that dollar worth back then? Well, I have ways of calculating that, and I, I could look it up, but I don't know offhand, but I'll take a guess. I would say it was worth about one-tenth of what it is today. Okay. Um, yeah, that's something that uh, we can... That's a question you can ask ChatGPT and probably <laughs> trust the answer, okay? But it's an empirical question. Um, but, um, yeah, there's... There has been an erosion of value, but one of the things about Yale that's interesting is one of the early professors here was... Um, Irving Fisher, and he had a belief, well, he observed that savers after the First World War, when there was hyperinflation, the savers got decimated by the fact that inflation eroded the value of their currency and of their bonds. And he was a proponent of investing in equities um, that would, he believed, uh, keep abreast of inflation over the long term. People believe that until suddenly in the 1970s and 80s, <laughs> there was this massive inflation and the stock market was dropping in real terms. So, you know, as economists, we would love to have the right answers all the time. But for the people that believed in the Irving Fisher p perspective, they were kind of shocked for a while when we had this um, late 20th century uh, rethink about uh, is inflation good or bad for the market? Really, diversification is sort of the key here because mm -hmm. because uh, we we don't really, even so-called experts don't know which way the stock market is going to go. But but uh, that's why we really need diversified portfolios with different types of assets in them. Yeah. Do you guys think um, you know if you go back to the financial crisis? Um, you go back further than that. Like right now, is there's no better time than the present to be very diversified. Annuities, sprinkling them, so sh maybe short-term bills possibly with some active uh, management. I know that you focus on factor investing a little bit as well, and then also some buy and hold. So is that almost the perfect portfolio for somebody who could take a little bit of risk and be able to dash it up a 50-50 yeah, in retirement? Hard, that is a hard question to say what would generally fit with people. Um, you know, uh, everybody's got a different retirement horizon and so forth. Um, but I will say, just to echo Roger's uh, perspective, when you look at the big shocks through the 20th century, you know, at times it's been stocks that have pulled you out of the doldrums. There was, a, in the 1980s, it was real estate that uh, seemed to have saved the day. So having quite a diversified portfolio um, is something that you're going to need if you're thinking about protecting yourself from the big downdrafts in the market. Got it. So the 60-40 portfolio is now the end-all of end-all portfolios anywhere in the zone. It, it was. You know, for 40 years it did great because bonds had such great returns. Mm -hmm. But it's going forward that it's not going to work. So alternatives is the answer for at least the next five to ten years and sprinkling a little this and a little that, sounds like. And then hopefully Social Security will be here, right? And that's why we need you for all this. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for having us here. This has uh, been a pleasure and a complete honor. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thanks for listening to the Retirement Coffee Talk podcast. If you have questions or would like to begin the process of building a tailored retirement plan, call Zinnia Wealth at 803-368-3680 or find us online at zinniawealth.com. Sharice Rivers is an investment advisor representative of Zinnia Wealth Advisory, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Sharice Rivers is licensed in your state, please contact their office. Zinnia Wealth Advisory, LLC, is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration 
Commission or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. Any client experiences discussed during this show are unique to that client. They are not meant to imply or suggest you will experience the same results. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Sharice Rivers, NPN Insurance License Number 8718011.